Guys, welcome to game three between Dentark and Seraph to determine who advances to the round of eight. I'm going to give the advantage to Dentarg overall. I feel like Seraph, I don't want to call it an accidental win in game one, but it feels like Dentarg just missed opportunities in game one to win. Upper left hand corner, we have. Oh, actually, let's switch it off to double color. That's interesting. Okay, actually, no. We're going to keep it here. <laughs> Upper left hand corner, that's the problem I ran into in uh, game one. I missed the review drop. Upper left hand corner, we have Dentarg as the red Protoss. Upper right hand corner, we have Seraph as the blue Protoss. This is on Polypoid. It's kind of interesting because I've seen a lot of double gate attempts on Eclipse. Maybe because it's less. I, I'm wondering what the logic behind different players as far as cheese goes. Because on four player maps, the cheese is less likely to get scouted, right? But you have more risk because you don't know where your opponent is. On two-player maps, you know where your opponent is, but the scouting information is much easier to, to obtain. I don't know. seems like there's advantages and disadvantages. I would expect it to be more popular on rampless maps in particular, and I, I don't know. We'll see. And I keep talking about cheese. We might just see a standard uh, PvP here. I actually feel like... Sir, I, if I was Seraph, I actually might go, I don't know, try to sneak a DT thing, something like that. Especially knowing that Dentarg just seems to have a uh, strong ability to macro. Speaking of scouting, though, we have both probes will come across each other midfield. So they know where each other's bases are. We do have a gateway first, opposite corner. And this is where early variations in builds can make all the difference, whether you're trying to, whether you opt to go for cybernetic score before initial zealot, where you go initial zealot first, whether you block your ramp with that zealot, things along those lines. Oftentimes that's played more in Dentarg's favor because Dentarg has opted to continue to produce probes um, or sneak additional probes out rather than go uh, protect along those uh, things along those lines. He is going to go cybernetic score before initial zealot, cybernetic score before initial zealot here for Seraph as well. And here's the other thing with the distance, both player and with the scouting, both players actually could skip Zealot. And I like that Dentarg is in fact opting to do that. He's like, as long as I keep this probe scout alive, when I see this initial Zealot like coming out of the gateway, I'll know what situation I'm in comparatively. And that he can just, okay, once he sees the Zealot kind of pop out of the gateway, as long as he spots it, he can go ahead and build a Zealot of his own, even with the cybernetic score kind of warping in a little bit later. So he sees that initial zealot, see if he opts to build his own, or realizing that that probe is kind of keeping that initial zealot distracted, yeah, he's still going to opt for a Dragoon first. And it's small advantages like this uh, that can make a big difference, because more or less what this is going to allow, this is going to allow Dentarg to go ahead and get rid of this probe scout in his base earlier, sooner rather than later. Subnetic score range is going to finish earlier for Dentarg as well. So range starting now, and it's just kind of little advantages like this that can uh, make all the difference. Uh, PV, PVP, and also this probe. Go ahead and walk its way back out. Looks like the probe's going to exit earlier from Seraph. Comparatively, second gateway down. Dragoon making its way out to the front very confidently. I'm not to say this is like game-winning stuff, but it's kind of like little things that can stack up into other things later down, later down the line. And, you know, slow down. If you were attempting to slow down other builds, because that Dragoon was produced earlier, Dentarg was able to get this gateway down a little earlier. You know, you guys get what I'm saying. Anyway, range about halfway finished. It looks like we are seeing at least some form of two-gate build. Dentarg going to place that pylon at that 1 o'clock base once again, just to see if there are drops incoming. And I'm wondering if that, again, suggests he's going to try to opt to play a little bit more passively. We are seeing one-gate Robo, comparatively. And Seraph, yeah, it looks like he's going to go for some proxy tech. He's got a pylon at the mineral only, which isn't, although he's moving that probe off. Is he going to move out? I, th I think he's just going to check that natural expansion and then make his way back. So checking the natural expansion, kind of hiding it in the back corner, is going to, ooh, interesting. This is interesting. Putting a pylon straight up behind the mineral only. Is he going to grab a forge? He's got the Robo, that probe being attacked and being pushed out. But that's a very risky... I don't know the logic behind this, to be honest. This is a very risky location to put that pile on. And Dentarg doesn't really provide a huge amount of scouting information. Dentarg does not see it, though. Additional pylon here at the 3 o'clock. I assume we got to be seeing 
something, right? Proxy? Those are, there's the robotic support bay and two gate. Comparatively, four dragoons making their way up. They're not going to get much headway. Robotics facility making its way. And Dentar, ooh, taking a lot of free fire as he's moving forward. There's the initial reaver being built. And I assume we're going to see drops. Observer being built as well. So I think he's, I guess he's placing this just to be, he's absolutely going to be aggressive here. But I think this is to spot whether a Nexus was warping in or not, as far as a follow-up. And he just assumes, okay, I'm going all in with two gate reaver and a forward attack. So did those Dragoons, I don't, those Dragoons didn't even see the pylon. Interesting. Okay, maybe they didn't see the pylon? Huh. Anyway. Observer initially being produced, so Dentarg is going to be at an overall disadvantage as far as just raw damage output. That pylon still confuses me, I'm going to be honest. I assume it's just to, yeah, keep a latent, because you could just keep a probe there, more or less. As long as you keep that probe alive, get some advantage there. I like the pylons around the map to kind of see uh, scouting information, the Observer making its way across it. But here's the thing, despite all this, this pylon's been alive for like four minutes. Throwing me off. Observatory warping in. Additional pylon. And I assume this indicated aggression. There's the mineral only pylon being wiped out. This one also confused me a little bit. Uh, to be honest. And that's actually putting Seraph in the red. Which is... Going to hurt his overall ability to, to build units for a potential aggressive attack. And losing... Yeah, losing precious time to do so. Also putting him behind in the overall uh, supply count. So where he would have had an advantage, pressing forward with this, potentially, with the shuttle overall. Instead, it's getting delayed uh, quite a while. And it looks like he's just going to keep out two reavers. This is just weird. Yeah, he's going to keep out two reavers. And he's going to go ahead and set up. And with these two reavers and these dragoons set up to take his natural expansion. But... Yeah, and lose this pylon. So basically, he donated. He donated basically 200 minerals to um, keep an eye on when expansions were coming up. And I feel like that, yeah, that cost him a lot. He's well behind again in that overall probe count. Dentarg is going to go ahead and take his natural expansion, it looks like. At least he's setting up to do so. He has the observer wandering in to get a good look at the tech. That observer is going to get hunted down, but it sees that natural expansion up. He's going to grab his natural expansion not too long after this. As far as a follow-up on top of this, though, again, Dentarg kept up with probe production, and as a result, he's going to be able to saturate that, ba that base uh, much more rapidly, comparatively. I'm going to admit, the pylon there confuses me a lot. I'm not sure what that was about. And also the pylon at the middle only. It, was just kind of, it feels like a risky location to, to place those. It supply-capped Seraph. Um, looks like a shuttle being built, by the way. Observer making its way across. Dentarg being aggressive. I think he's just going to... We'll see if he just holds up the mineral only. Yeah, just going to hold up the mineral only, spread out these Dragoons just in case an attack was making its way in, and keep the Reavers back here at the main. This is giving an opportunity with an Observer from Seraph to go ahead and maybe do some free shots. You really got to babysit the Reaver when it's doing this, but you can kind of fire up the hill and then back off, and then fire up the hill and back off. Because Re uh, Reaver Scribes do not care about the misfire chance going up. But anyway, Dentarg adding two additional gateways ahead of this natural expansion. Again, he's gonna he should be able to really make this whirl. A five gateways for Seraph to follow this up. A good amount of map control. Ooh. Observer getting picked off right as the probe's saturating right there. And again, this is better saturation for Dentarg once they kind of reshuffle comparatively. Kind of see the comparative probes. And a reaver, was that a slow walk? I think that might have been a slow walk reaver. Or was there a shuttle? Okay, there was a shuttle. Shuttle was making its way to the north. Seraph adjusted, made his way up there, went ahead. I've been bad at about keeping my eyes on these shuttles. So Dentarg, as far as a follow-up, is in a superior position, in my opinion. And it looks like he's actually opting to be aggressive. He's got a 20 supply lead. Keep in mind that's, again, mostly in probes. Going to be able to take out another pylon. Observer's down. The Reaver's getting some nice shots 
inside this natural expansion on the concavity. The Reaver even eating a Scarab Shot right there. One Reaver is going to get picked off to the south. It looks like that second Reaver is exposed. And that second Reaver is down to another Scarab Shot. And Dentar just with superior micro and superior engagement location, raining down Hellfire in the form of these little blue orbs at Seraph's natural and just pressing straight in. And honestly, I feel like Seraph had a decent army to engage this, but oof, those Scarab Shots. Beautiful engagement point. Absolutely wrecking here. Well played by Dentark. He will advance to the round of eight. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.